this. So please, please, please bear with me. Are we recording? Hello? Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, please bear with me. Because we are doing our first true crimes ASMR video. Uh, these videos are really, really popular. Um, I think just true crime in general is really, really popular. And so I thought I would give it a go. It was a recommended uh, video request when I put up asking for video ideas and someone said do a true crime sort of UK edition because again I think this is very popular I think because the majority of like artists and stuff are like channel creators are American a lot of the stories are American all the, the true crimes so um, I do have uh, I will be relying relatively heavy on our notes but enough of the rambling this is the true Crimes UK edition for the Yorkshire Ripper. Uh, the Yorkshire Ripper, a um, a person who committed a series of murders and assaults over sort of like the seventies um, in in Yorkshire, which is uh, an area in sort of like the northwest sort of, um, of England. And what's this is like it's. Um, Quite, it's obviously very dark and grisly, um, so I don't, I'm not going to go into like sort of like so 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 much details about the actual attacks, but we're going to go through because it's a really really interesting story um, and how this man managed to get away with so much. And what makes it even more interesting to me on a personal note is because my family, I have a lot of family from West Yorkshire, um, and my dad. Uh, grew up um, with the Yorkshire Ripper events going on and members, you know, a lot of people were terrified, especially women, um, as you'll um, we'll come to know as we go for it, and he remembers when these are like the investigations were going on and how cars were stopped, you know, trying to find uh, this bloke, this uh, very evil, evil man. And so yeah, on the 22nd of May 1981, Peter Sutcliffe was convicted of murdering 13 women, attempting to murder seven, uh, largely in the West Yorkshire area. I think there were two in Manchester, but it was mainly in the West Yorkshire, north of England area. Uh, and he's now currently serving 20 years concurrent life imprisonment, sorry, 20 concurrent uh, life sentences imprisoned. So, as with all these stories and these tales, I think it makes sense to go to the beginning, especially with people like this, because usually there's an inkling in their sort of early years that something is twisted, and something is wrong. So, Peter Sutcliffe was born into a working class family in Bingley in the West Ridings of Yorkshire. He was raised in a Catholic household, uh, reportedly a loner. Uh, he left school at age 15. Um, taking on uh, menial jobs, uh, most notably uh, a couple stints as a grave digger. Um, and I think that's what influenced uh, what was described as quite a macabre sense of humour. Um, taking redundancy in 1975 as a, uh, from a television factory, he took some of his redundancy money and used that to train as a heavy goods vehicle driver. And that's a really, really key bit of information moving forward. The fact that he became a HGV driver. Uh, some reports state that Sutcliffe sold the company of uh, prostitutes and was left with a bad experience after being conned out of money by one. Uh, he met Sonia uh, Sersma in February 1967 uh, and they got married in 1974. Uh, she was a teacher who suffered several miscarriages and, um, before she was informed that, uh, that she couldn't children. The couple could not have children. Um, it was discovered that Sonia actually had an affair with an ice cream van driver, but the, the couple stayed together. Um, she stayed with Sutcliffe and they used her teaching salary to buy a house uh, in the Bradford area. Um, so yeah, so in terms of growing up, uh, Sutcliffe showed no real overt signs of abnormality. Although towards the end of his adolescence, he showed a proclivity towards voyeurism, um, watching uh, the activities of uh, prostitutes 
and the men that engaged in uh, in their services. So um, that's a big thing. So the old stripper, many, 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 many of his victims, um, unfortunate victims, were were prostitutes. But that's the sort of the beginning. That's well. That's that's his sort of a very brief overview of him as a person. So his um, depths into sort of evilness really uh, began in 1969. So we go all the way back to 1969. So Sutcliffe began his horrors in 1969 when he assaulted a prostitute he had met while searching uh, for a woman, for the woman who had conned him out of uh, out of money uh, previously. He left his mate Trevor um, Bussler. Left his mates Trevor Bussler, so I, I can't read my own writing. I think that's a Bussler. Bursler. Trevor Bursler's van, his mate's van, until he was out of sight. And then he returned, returned uh, supposedly to his friend in the van, completely breathless, out of breath, and told him to speed off, basically to drive off. It later followed that Sutcliffe had followed a prostitute into uh, into a garage, into a house's garage, and he then attacked her with a stone in a sock uh, over her head, and apparently with such force that the stone had actually torn um, the toe section of the sock off. Now, the woman had uh, survived that assault, and what you'll discover over this is a litany of errors made by sort of police officials. So the woman survived um, and the attack was reported uh, and in that position Sutcliffe, when, um, when questioned, changed the story to say he had actually attacked her with his hands and uh, not, with, um, not with a stone in a sock. But nothing was taken further, no charges were pressed uh, because the woman was well known in the area as a uh, a lady of the night, and her husband was already in prison for assault. Um, she obviously didn't really want to engage with the police any more than absolutely necessary, and so Peter Sutcliffe was told he was very, very lucky, and he was let off. Uh, one of those where history could have changed. Okay. six years, um, where over the spate, uh, the span of summer, a couple of summer months, and a late winter, uh, multiple incidences occurred. July. In July, Anna Rogulski, was walking alone, was struck by a hammer, and her stomach, her abdomen was slashed by Peter Sutcliffe. However, Peter was disturbed. A neighbour was uh, rattling about, uh, maybe opened a door disturbed Sutcliffe and so he fled the scene meaning that she survived. August. Olive smelt of Halifax. Um, Peter, Peter Sutcliffe, Sutcliffe continues his same sort of modus operandi. He continued, um, he started by striking with a hammer but then instead of uh, attacking the abdomen he uh, attacked from behind uh, and slashed the um, upper end of the uh, sort of buttocks. Um, again, he was disturbed and she survived. And so, so far, um, he's assaulted three women, but all of them um, had luckily survived. Now, unfortunately, come October of 1975, um, the first victim, the first victim to live her life, uh, occurred. A woman by the name of Wilma McCann, a, a mother of four. She was struck twice with a hammer before being stabbed 15 times. This, this murder led to a massive, massive inquiry, uh, leading with 150 officers and 11,000 interviews, but no culprit was found. 1976, January. A 42-year-old prostitute named Emily Jackson was murdered. Now, Emily Jackson uh, used the family van, she had a family van with her husband, and due to falling into uh, financial dire 
straight, financially um, vulnerable. Her husband had agreed to use the van as um, a a vehicle, really, for for these activities to, to bring a bit of coin, and she would um, solicit her services by going around pubs, uh, pubs in the area, and so yeah, she um, picked up Sutcliffe. So Sutcliffe inquired about her services, got into the van. She would then go to an industrial estate. Um, obviously very quiet and then Sutcliffe um, murdered her and obviously being in the, the area the area was was convenient um, for uh, those sorts of um, sexual activities it was also convenient as a place to uh, discard and dispose of um, a body but still after all this Sutcliffe no one zero suspicion then May comes around. In May, 20-year-old Marcella Claxton accepted a lift off of Sutcliffe when walking home from a party. And when she got out to, uh, to sort of use the bushes, that's when Sutcliffe bounced. Um, Sutcliffe attacked her, uh, but she survived. Uh, later, testifying against him, uh, the tragic thing was she was four months pregnant at the time and uh, uh, suffered a miscarriage as a result. But again, uh, Sutcliffe was unable to be uh, properly identified and was um, was fine. Apologies if you heard. That was the kitchen chair, sorry, my housemate. Again, I'll, I'll try to edit out uh, any disturbing sounds. So, his crimes are starting to amount and his confidence at the same time is increasing. We hit 1977, February, prostitute Irene Richardson is murdered in a park. She is bludgeoned and then mutilated. So that seems to be his, that was his, um, um, for lack of a better word, style to bludgeon and then mutilate. Tire tracks, however, were left. Um, the tracks resulted in a long list of possible suspected vehicles. So again, all, not only is there a series of crimes, there's and all in different areas of West Yorkshire, uh, Yorkshire, there's just a multitude of possible suspects, um, very difficult to narrow down. In April, Patricia Atkinson, another sex worker, was killed, this time leaving boot marks on the bed sheets. So again, a sort of a sloppiness the evidence is being left but the police are unable to sort of stitch it together in any meaningful way the big the big thing of 1977 occurred when 16 year old um, Jane McDonald was murdered in the same month in uh, Chapel Town uh, this was such a um, this was an important uh, crime in in this saga because previously it had predominantly been it had been uh, sort of prostitutes and sex workers who were the victims of Sutcliffe's crimes. However, this was she, this sixteen-year-old wasn't uh, any of those occupations, and it really, really sent a shockwave nationally, um, and especially you know, and instilled a lot more fear because it meant you know any woman was at risk. Really, really was at risk. Um, and then, um, Sutcliffe, again, another murder attempt, um, was interrupted, which meant, uh, Maureen, um, Laurie of, um, Bradford survived. Um, however, a witness, involving it, there was a witness who, um, misidentified the Sutcliffe's car, which meant that the police were again, diverted by going down a, a line of inquiry that was inaccurate from the start. Yet it led to 300 officers being committed to this search for a vehicle that was incorrect. Then of October that year, sex worker Jean Jordan was murdered in Manchester. She was murdered in Manchester. Um, I'll have 
whether her body was dumped in a wasteland, and whether I think this was the first time he had to return to the scene, to the corpse, um, because he discovered that the new five pound that had come into circulation was traceable, and so he must have paid with a fiver, and knew that it was traceable, and obviously this is an issue. However, he went to the body, he was unable to find the fiver, and, um, and so he tried to disfigure and mutilate the unfortunate body. However, this five pound note is an important aspect of the story. So the note um, was still discovered when the body was discovered by um, the police. The five pound note um, was found in a secret, uh, sort of secret section of her purse. Um, this was important because they were able, they were able to trace that back to uh, Shipley and Bingley, where Sutcliffe is from, and they managed to narrow, narrow it down to a possible eight thousand people who could have got that five pound note in their pay packet. And so five thousand men, including Sutcliffe, so Sutcliffe um, again, more interaction with the police was interviewed. Um, however, previously on the night of the murder, he had been at he had been at a family party, and so when he used that as his alibi, um, it was believed it was uh, sort of verifiable. And the credibility of it meant he was let go. Um, then, December, December 1977, Marilyn Moore, again another prostitute. So there was obviously a, a pattern in these sort of um, preferred victims, and you could tell by the sort of his style of crime um, how how sort of prostitutes would let themselves. Um, to be able to commit those um, those crimes, and um, obviously you see the sort of the, the Yorkshire Ripper and the, the Jack the Ripper links. So Marilyn Moll, she was assaulted on the 14th of December. However, uh, she had survived and was able to give a um, a physical description of the t uh, of the attacker. And again, the tire tracks um, they knew the tire tracks matched previous attack, they just couldn't tell which they couldn't tell which vehicle it was, but they knew that the two were linked and thus knew that this was all connected. Nineteen seventy eight comes around. Yeah, nineteen seventy eight comes around. January. In January the the, the five pound note search the search uh, the, the trail uh, was abandoned. Um, and during that abandonment, um, Suckley had killed again. He killed Yvonne Pearson, a 21-year-old prostitute from Bradford. This was a almost a little bit more disturbing um, incident, as he had stuffed horse hair in her mouth um, that he um, took from a, a discarded sofa. And um, even more sort of horrifying, the body wasn't discovered until till late March. April comes around. April, Sutcliffe murders 18-year-old prostitute Helen Reedger from Huddersfield. Um, she was uh, she was killed when leaving his vehicle and um, dumped at the, at the bottom of railway arches. So he would, you know, get them in to use the surfaces and then Grizzly. Again, and then later that month, he killed Vera Millwood in the car park of the Manchester Royal Infirmary. Um, oh, no, in May. So that was in May. Nineteen seventy-nine. So all these years, he's able to sort of rampant as it were, and unable to find him. Nineteen seventy-nine. Sutcliffe killed bank clerk Josephine Whittaker, 19, on Savile Moor Park in Halifax. And again, this was a um, another massive thing because it reignited the fact that it wasn't just prostitutes who were um, who were 
were seen as multiple victims, it was really just women in general and of such a broad age spectrum. Forensic evidence, despite the sort of the accumulation of forensic evidence that mounted up, there, there was, it just led to nowhere. And again, like the misidentification of the vehicle, they were led down another wrong line of inquiry because a sort of hoax um, uh, came came on scene. They were diverted by the tape of an impersonator who goaded the assistant chief constable. And he sent a tape, he sent a tape saying, I'm Jack. I see you're having no luck catching me. I have the greatest respect for you, George, the chief constable. But Lord, you are no closer to catching me than four years ago. That message led them to searching for a Wearside accent, a tractor sort of Sunderland, which is in the northeast of England, so away from Yorkshire. It was discovered that John Humble, a man called John Humble, was the hoaxer, and he was claiming responsibility not only for those murders, but uh, uh, a raft of other murders. And he was sending letters to national newspapers claiming ownership, and uh, but signing them, uh, Jack the Ripper, September 1st, Sutcliffe attacked a Bradford University student, Barbara Leach, um, and dumped her under a pile of bricks. Um, and again, further reignited the alarm that it wasn't just sex workers who were who were at risk. <coughs> and this and this actually led to a, a massive national campaign. It really did focus the sort of the national efforts on getting this cracked. It was you know it wasn't a just a local or regional sort of crime. Now it was garnered um, mass, mass attention, national attention. Bizarrely, um, in in this year, Sutcliffe was interviewed two other times, so two other times he was brought in by the police for questioning. Um, he matched several of the forensic clues that they had amassed, um, and he was also on a short list of 300 people with a possible £5 note. So, forensic evidence is on the shortlist for the five pound notes and yet he was strongly suspected in total he was interviewed nine times uh, 1980 so we're coming towards the end now in April of 1980 Sutcliffe was arrested for drink driving and during the time between waiting for trial, he murdered two, two people, 47-year-old Margaret Wells and student Jacqueline Hill. Um, he had also attacked three others who survived. So in the, in, it was, it's insane, the space between, um, between being arrested for drunk driving, again, another interaction with the police, and going on trial, he managed to assault or murder five people. 25th of November, Birdsell, Birdsell, his mate, um, so the one who, at the very start of this in 1969, who, um, who was in the, the van, who, when, um, Sutcliffe, uh, ran, like, went off, out of sight, assaulted the, like, possibly with the stone in the stock, this guy, this is the guy, he actually reported, reported Sutcliffe as a suspect, so he suspected that Sutcliffe was responsible for crimes. But again, ineptitude. That information was, um, uh, dis um, what, what did I put? Oh, disappeared. I can't read my own writing. Uh, but that information disappeared into the already, um, uh, reams and reams and reams and reams of paperwork, uh, that I had amassed around this case. So we're in the 80s, 1981, comes around, and this is where it comes to the head. In 1981, Sutcliffe was stopped by the police, and in the company of Sutcliffe was a 24-year-old prostitute, um, and this is in Sheffield, again, Yorkshire. Um, the police who sort of stopped him, they ran, uh, they ran a check on his car, and they saw that he had uh, false registration plates, fake registration 
registration plates. And so that was grounds to bring him in. So they brought him in, and whilst they were there, they started questioning him about the Yorkshire Ripper cases, noting that um, there were obvious physical characteristic um, similarities. Um, the next day, the police returned to the scene where they had arrested Sutcliffe and they found discarded a hammer, a rope and a knife and they deduced that he must have thrown this all away when um, he was getting arrested he, he, went, he needed to pee he went off, dis tried to discard all of this before being taken into the police station and apparently he also tried to hide uh, a knife that he had on him uh, in, the, in the toilets in the police station um, and so when Sutcliffe uh, was at the police station he was stripped and they found not only did he have padded elbows but he was wearing a inverted v-neck sweater on his on his legs and they deduced that it was for um, to sort of stop bruising uh, when he was committing uh, these atrocities when he was um, over his victims and then finally after two days of questioning um, Sutcliffe was declared declared the Ripper and obviously arrested and put on trial. So yeah, that's the um, quite very dark and sort of recent um, crimes of the Yorkshire Ripper. And obviously it's sort of, um, I find these, um, well first of all, they're very harrowing, aren't they? It's uh, very disturbing. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the thing. And again, it was meant that was my my dad obviously was grew up in the areas of my you know my grandma uh, um, obviously about that was like there was a very palpable worry um, oh, that, and my auntie as well yeah yeah because she would have been yeah she's only two years older than my dad yeah yeah so yeah, it was about eighties uh, in the seventies but also fifteen sixteen so yeah very very scary and a very dark dark story Peter Sutcliffe the Yorkshire Ripper. Um, but guys, I, um, I hope you enjoyed that, um, as a true crimes, I think, like I said, it's my first true crimes, I was struggling, uh, to think of what to do, because I felt like you had to, like, you had to be, like, interesting, but I was like, hey, it's, it does also have to be relaxing, so you don't want to pick something really, really bad, I was going to do the Moors murders, but then that is proper dark, and I thought, well, no, not, even though this is also horrific, uh, victims horrible um, but yeah please let me know if you like this if you'd like to do uh, like me to do another true crimes um, happy to do it uh, let me know down below what sort of true crimes you'd like me to do like I said I don't think there's too many sort of UK um, true crimes have been done so there's unfortunately because of crime there's a, um, quite a few to choose from so let us know I hope I did this um, as you meant to like I say hopefully I didn't rely too heavily on the notes I did need them just to Help, help, help. But yeah, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in.